everybody, it's me, Russ, and this is a tour of Vinny the van. <laughs> we just got another 2005 Dodge Caravan. Check him out. All right, there's the, I got plates. These, my uh, Master Tech, I had to put this extra screw down here so it wouldn't flop around. <laughs> but Master Tech was throwing his Seahawks plates away after the last season uh, with the Seahawks. And I'm like, hey, I'll take those because you can have them. That's fine, you know. And uh, I'm like, okay. So we put, we got the Seahawks. We're, we're excited about the new season. We'll see what happens, man. This is, uh, it's got some, yeah, it's got some body damage. It's an old Grand Caravan. Looks like Bondo right there. That's interesting. Bondo on the bumper. Got another dent there. Looks like something. Got a little rust. I'm going to have to cover that. My wife's looking up some paint. Tires are good. And it's got the all weather tires on it. This is one thing I, I didn't want. So there's another. I was like, dude, you know, I, I don't want to buy one that's got, you know, engine noise in the bottom end or, I mean, 200,000 miles. So this, this vehicle, and even a few years ago, I wouldn't have paid more than 900 for this vehicle. But now, the way you use car prices are, it's just crazy. You know, we had to beat a guy out who was going to show up at 10 a.m. We showed up at like 7.30 in the morning so that we would get this vehicle. We paid 1500 which is more than I wanted to pay, but that's kind of what's going on in the market. And maybe I'll do a video on that later. I've got some ideas as to why the used car market is the way it is. Um, it's not just the chip shortage, like most people may think. I think it's actually more systemic than that. But, yeah, this is one of the things that I, I, I asked about. It's like, it's not, it doesn't have, like, edge wear on one side, does it? Or it's pulling to the right a little bit. He's like, oh, no, it's got some engine noise, though. So this needs a control rod. Odds are that's what the sign this is on one side. You know, you'll get a tow problem if it's both sides, but usually if there's a control rod out or even a strut. Uh, but I don't mind doing that work. I didn't want to do that work until I saw the interior of this van, you know? like So this is a big seller for my wife and I, Stow & Go Seating. And this is one of the earliest years that it had it. And they still have this st same kind of seating today, as I understand. Um, if they're still making them. I think they quit making caravans in 2020, 2021. I did oil changes on uh, for Hertz, and we saw a lot of brand new caravans. But the this Stow & Go seating is so cool because you don't have to lug the seats anywhere. They just fold right up in here. So this, this seat probably has to come forward a little bit more. But... Hold on. This seat comes forward all the way. Just move that seat forward. This is that. Keep two hands <laughs> like that. And then you got your seat. And then you got more storage down here. You could store a bunch of stuff. Yeah. This is the thing for the spare. That's one thing about the spare is actually underneath. See, that's the, the little jack thing that lowers the spare to the ground. It's right in the middle of the vehicle. And again, that's like the newer caravans. Um, I think they stopped making the caravans, just the Pacific now. But yeah, this all folds down. So this is awesome. And the same with the back seat. The back seat does the same thing. It just folds right into the floor. And you have extra storage. Right here. Yeah. So yeah, now that I'm back to being self-employed and doing the entrepreneurial thing, my wife and I, uh, we both need a van. So she uses a van. She used Vicky the van for hauling furniture and things like that. She gets it, sells it, resells it, uh, offer up Facebook Marketplace, that kind of thing. Um, this has a trailer hitch too, which is kind of cool. Although. 
I'm not sure I want to put this tired old engine through that. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It's just actually check. Oh, the jack's not there. That's not good. Gonna need to find a jack. Looks like I'm gonna have to do a wrecking yard run. That'll be fun. Oh yeah, there's another thing that I wanted to do a wrecking yard run for for this vehicle. That's another great thing about these vehicles is 2005, there is just a bunch of parts in the wrecking yards for these vehicles. Look at that, There's a. it's been sitting for a long time, so a little hornet's nest hanging out. He said he didn't drove it for a while. It's time to clear out some space. So, you may be asking why I have so much Lucas. <laughs> because I like the product. Um, Master Tech at the first shop like said, hey, Lucas and another buddy of mine uh, who's been in some of the videos, Anthony, he was like, dude, you gotta try this upper cylinder lubricant. Put it in your gas tank run a through tank, couple tanks through it. This stuff is awesome. So I'm gonna treat the top end with that and I'm gonna treat the bottom end with this. So this is one quart of Lucas and here, I'll show you. Top hood. I mean, the engine's nice and clean. It looks like you had it cleaned. Uh, it looks like it's got new plug wires, probably spark plugs in it. EGR valve looks somewhat, I don't know if that's new, maybe. They do go through these. Um, I mean, it looks good <laughs> on the outside. 192276. Okay, turn that off before I get a copyright strike. Yeah, you can hear some valve clatter. It actually sounds better than it did when, when I bought it. And I haven't driven it that long with a Lucas in it, but it sounded worse when we first started it up, when we first drove it home. Uh, so it's already sounding a little better. That sounds better. It's wild. The upper cylinder. I'm trying to show that how, how noisy a racket. It's already sounding better. Look at that. To find out a wrecking yard is a better dipstick. The pins busted off. But yeah, the Lucas uh, oil stabilizer is. I may not add the whole quart. It's going to change the viscosity considerably. It's going to make the oil a lot more, uh, a lot thicker, but it's also gonna lubricate the engine. It's gonna cause more pressure. So the reason I wanna be conservative with this is I don't want to damage the oil pump because the oil pump is going to be like, hey, why is the oil so thick all of a sudden? It's an old oil pump. Um, I could replace it, but it would be a job, you know. Uh, I, I'm still considering the fact that it may have a, a guide to the timing chain problem. But it sounds more like a valve clatter in the front and maybe in the back to me. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to gonna go with a Lucas and I'll, I'll do a video on that. But, yeah, we like Vinny the Van. One of my favorite things is the uh, vintage media stereo system here. Because <laughs> I like to buy old stuff, old tapes and CDs. Look at this. Found this at uh, Daybreak Records for two bucks. Good old Jailbreak by Thin Lizzy. Very cool. Don't want a copyright strike. Can't do more than five seconds. But yeah, CDs. We haven't tried the CD player yet, love. Gonna have to do that. So, but hey, thanks for watching, and uh, we're gonna get on this uh, engine noise and do a video on that sometime soon. And also, my wife wants to clear up some of this uh, acne.
got some zits on the front. Get a paint pen or something. I'm trying to find the right paint pen product. Oh, also, this is another thing we're going to need to go to the wrecking yard for. Dude put this on. He broke the mirror off because there's so much traffic because of the West Seattle Bridge closure. Somebody drove by and took his mirror off. So he put this this weird contraption on here. It's actually... Uh, hopefully there's no damage because of this stuff, but we'll see. It looks okay. Um, but yeah, it, it, it seems like more work than it would have been to just get one at a wrecking yard. I have to call the wrecking yard to see how much they sell these for. Because they sell them at like Rock Auto and Amazon has them for like $27 or something like that. Sometimes wrecking yards are getting, they're getting expensive too now. So you gotta shop around. I can always check O'Reilly AutoZone before I go to the wrecking yard because sometimes yeah, they're the same price, if not cheaper. Oh yeah, gonna have to quiet that noise a little bit. At least a little bit. Actually, the other 05 I had started sounding like this around 300,000 miles, and I still put another 130,000 miles on. You know? So that's the longevity of this 3.3 liter Chrysler engine. These are these are sweet little motors. Um, I'd be I'd be surprised to see a Bronco Sport get 130,000 miles. Sadly, those little little turbocharged stuff with horsepower engines. Uh, yeah, this thing needs a brake flash real bad. Uh, Thanks for watching. Gunner just got his nails clipped here at the vet. I mean, he should get 25% off with only having three legs there. Huh, buddy? You did so good. You did good boy. He's 14, three legs. He's not as mobile as he used to be. You're a good dog. Yes, you are. Good boy, Gunner. Good boy.